we yeah. noticed that the momentum, the joy, uh, started picking up a little bit. And the meditation is starting to slowly take off. The bird is slowly taking off from the ground. And uh, many smiles today. And I think it will be good to cover just uh, once more, you know, do some really good groundwork to understand wholesome mental development, bhavana, and what we're doing, how the mind works, how to uplift it uh, by the two wings, letting go and joy. And then our mind becomes collected. And one of the analogies that the Buddha had for this work is a simile of the cloth, Suvatta Sutta, which is Majjhima Nikaya number seven. And this is what we'll be talking about tonight. So I can't remember who was saying yesterday uh, that their, their little birds were trying to flap their wings and then they were uh, crashing on the ground very often. <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. Um, so <clears throat> hopefully uh, with this, this talk tonight, uh, we'll cover up one more time how it works and the bird can really take flight and uh, the mind can be very uplifted and hopefully um, we can have everything that we need for the rest of this retreat, will, which will uh, unfold. Uh, are you familiar with a sutta that is called the Uposatha Sutta, which is uh, a discourse by the Buddha where uh, uh, the Buddha instructs Visaka on these different Buddha Nusati, Dhamma Nusati, Sangha Nusati, Chaga Nusati, Sila Nusati, Devata, Devata Nusati, maybe. Are you familiar with this sutta? In this sutta he says, uh, just like a, cle a piece of cloth becomes clean with the help of soap, clean water and effort, so does the mind uh, gets purified by the help of uh, these wholesome states and continuously developing them, basically. Good. So the Buddha had this wonderful way of teaching using a lot of analogies which are really helpful. Uh, and one of, one of these is the analogy of the cloth that he used quite a bit. And comparing our minds to a piece, a piece of cloth. Uh, and in, in the monastic way of life, uh, it's, it's quite uh, central to our, our practice because a lot of the time, uh, upasakas and upasikas will give us white cloth that we have to sew and stitch and measure and make our own robes. And the, robe is uh, the cloth is white and Usually we will dye it and then wear it. So uh, just to put you a little bit into context here, because this is, uh, this is what the Buddha is referring to when he talks about these things, because it is very uh, present in our lifestyle. Um, and this discourse takes place in Savati, Anathapindika's Arami. The awakened one says, Monks, just as a piece of cloth, were stained and full of dirt, and a dyer would soak it in any kind of dye, whether it was blue, yellow, or orange, or red. It would look badly dyed and dull in color. Why? Because of the dirtiness of the cloth. Um, I once tried to uh, make... Uh, robes out of uh, discarded cloth or like rag, rag robes uh, from, <laughs> from various donations. And um, I put a lot of work into it and uh, it, was, it was like a pretty old piece of cotton. <laughs> 
had seen many years and um, I, I worked maybe for like three, four, maybe five days like hand, hand stitching the, the cloth. It was going to be my, uh, my uh, antarawasaka, my lower robe. And um, <laughs> after putting all this work in, uh, I dyed it and it wasn't really, uh, wasn't really nice. <laughs> because it was really old and it had all these stains and when you look at it when it was white you couldn't really see it because yeah it was it, the white would kind of not really show it but when you would put it in the dye and bring it out you could see all these big stains on it and like where the dye wouldn't actually go in really well and where it had been stained and where it like it all came out so it wasn't really nice at all after all this work. So I think it's just uh, the Buddha like uh, bringing up this, this slice of monastic life. The, the, the bhikkhus probably all experience that. <laughs> Putting like a week of work in their robe and like dry, dyeing it and then it comes out really ugly. <laughs> in the same way, monks, when the mind is soiled, a difficult life can be expected. So it's the same thing with our minds. When our minds are full of unwholesome states, then that's what we see. That's what we experience. Uh, it doesn't matter um, whether we're somewhere pleasant or somewhere you know, that uh, we have all the good conditions that could be conducive to our happiness, but if the mind is stained, then that's what we see. So this is what we're doing here. We're actually taking these stains, brushing them off, and then purifying the cloth so that we can start to see life in an uplifted way, in a clear way. And so this is yata bhutang jnana dasanang also, seeing things the way that they are, simply. Yeah, That's, that is parisuddhi, that is what happens when the mind is clear. So, and much of the rest, we often think that, oh, I'm going to be happy when, I'm going to be happy when this happens, when this happens. But actually, <laughs> we're going to be happy when we're happy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then whatever happens, you're happy. <laughs> There's no problem. So this is what we're doing. And just as if, a piece of cloth were clean and bright and a dyer would soak it in any kind of dye whether it was blue, yellow or orange or red it would look well dyed and bright in color. Why? Because of the cleanliness of the cloth. In the same way monks when the mind is clear and bright a happy life can be expected. And so the color here is whatever you do. The dye here is the activity that you're doing, whether you're on the meditation retreat, whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether it's blue, yellow, orange, or red. That's what that means here. And the mind will take the dye or the situation perfectly and will adapt to it perfectly. That doesn't, uh, a mind that is clear will see that situation through very well. So this is the application in daily life as well, in everything that we do. Now, what are the stains of the mind? <laughs> Some of you are familiar with these 16. <laughs> Clinging to selfish desires is a stain of the mind. Impatience is a stain of the mind. Anger is a stain of the mind. Holding grudges, pretension, retaliation, jealousy, selfishness, deceit, dishonesty, obstinacy, arrogance, pride, self-aggrandizement, intoxication, and carelessness are all stains of the mind. <laughs> TK. Very good. 
I just love having the poly with it. It's so good. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm still amazed by the experience. Uh, to have uh, this opportunity to have this, like, you know, like a, a whole group that understands, you know, that's so amazing. Good. Okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> so, once again, I just want to pause here and say, uh, do you do you see the Buddha like coming to you? and putting this on a plate for you. Like all of these states, all of these are the stains of the mind. They're not you, they're stains of the mind. But the root of these stains is me. Yes. Ah, oh, I struck a chord there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Very good. Yes, and they're all rooted in this me. I am ahankara. And so, interestingly, they work in both ways. They're uh, this sense of me, and they're also creating it. So they come out of it, and they also create it. And when we let them go, when we cultivate wholesome states like maitri, like uh, karuna, like joy, like Upeka, these are all selfless states. They have very, very little self in it. They are giving. They are about dana. They are about chaga. So they're not about taking. And that's why it's so important. When we understand this, then we can you know, we can go into really profound philosophies about anatta, but one of the most profound things is that these states, and don't worry, there's way more than this, <laughs> um, they are what create our sense of self, and they are what uh, our sense of self gives rise to also. When, um, when there is anger in the mind, the mind takes itself very seriously. It's thinking, oh, I really don't like this person, and next time I see them, oh, I should have said that, and oh, I, sh like, I should have acted this way, and said this, and done this, and, and all of that, and it's taking itself very, very, very seriously. Uh, all of these hindrances, they're about you know, something that I am not okay with, or I am really taking it personal. And as we learn to see this, and this is the beauty of it, is the Buddha is saying, here, these are just unwholesome states. There are the stains in the mind, and if you just let them go, you'll be happy, you'll be free. And this sense of, this coarse sense of self will start to dissolve and you'll see there is much, much happiness and freedom beyond this. Now there's 16 of these stains, but uh, really it's even easier than this. This is whenever the mind is distracted, patakla. Batakla. Uh, uh, whenever mind goes batakla. Uh? <laughs> that is when um, any of these states that were previously conditioned in our minds, that we've basically allowed to train, allowed to cultivate, allowed to grow in our minds, when you come on retreat, you start to calm down. And then when you start to calm down, everything comes into you. Because now you're going into the water of your own awareness. When you're doing all the things in life, you, you're very active, you get involved in a lot of things, you engage. And oftentimes we don't really notice you know, what's going on in the background. But when you come here, you calm down, and the first three, three maybe sometimes four days, 
are just about okay, like realizing what's going on in the mind and <laughs> six R, six R, six R. <laughs> and then bringing up the metta and having strong faith, sadha. Because it takes a little bit of time. It's normal. It's, it's just to be expected. It's like, uh, it's like being in a canyon and you're, you're talking and then there's echo, you know? Like you, even if you scream, then it, it doesn't come back right away. But at one point it comes back and you hear it, it again. It's the same thing on retreat. Now you get to hear everything you've shouted in the world. <laughs> and, so, and so you need to relax, continually relax. And then at some point you will see it gets very quiet and it gets very happy. And this is all this to say that whenever a distraction arises, it's any of these states that caused your mind to go like this. And then this is what you're experiencing. And the six R's is the purification process that we're cleaning the mind with. And don't worry, forgiveness is the same thing. Forgiveness is just a coarser, stronger cleaning agent of the mind. That's all it is. It's the same practice. Nothing really changes, but we just need to scrub a little deeper because some of these things, uh, they can be harder to, to get rid of, basically. And so we really need to dive in and to bring these things up. And you will see afterwards, uh, the mind becomes so much lighter because of the cleaning process. And these, these heavier, uh, coarser emotions that we keep within us, like these rocks that we keep inside, when they come out, it feels really good. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I've practiced forgiveness for myself uh, about a year and a half to two years. So, <laughs> and um, it wasn't exactly like, like we teach here because uh, I had to figure it out on my own, this one. Um, that was before I came upon this teaching. Uh, this way that we practice here is, uh, I would say, a lot, is very good. It's very good. I wish I could have encountered that before. But uh, I took the long road. And um, I can only say that once forgiveness is done very well and properly and thoroughly, it's a very, very powerful technique to have with you. And you can carry that in your life all the time. It's, I think it's one of the most useful tools to have, to be honest, uh, in your daily life. Because you can, you can use it all the time as well, and it works really well. So everybody here is on the same page on this. We're all practicing the same, and there's no, you know, there's no one is better than the other. Actually, forgiveness can be a lot better sometimes because you'll get to really clean your slate. So uh, there's a bit of repetition here in the sutta. Uh, I'll try to kind of uh, go quickly through it. <laughs> uh, I'll summarize, basically. When one understands that clinging to selfish desires, impatience, anger, holding grudges, pretension, and all of these 16 unwholesome states that we just went through are all stains of the mind. So when we understand, this is not me. This is just a stain of the mind. Did you wake up this morning uh, thinking, I haven't felt terrible in a really long time. I should feel terrible now. <laughs> no, no. No, or just like, hmm, haven't felt depressed in a really long time, like maybe three years. Maybe, maybe it would be a good time right now to feel depressed. N no, no, that's not the way it happens. The way it happens is that it's stored up somehow in our minds through our actions, and then it comes out, it comes out. And whenever you have a distraction, Notice, did you ask for that distraction to come? Did you say like, mm, meditation is really good right now, I should just like, batakla, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, you haven't said that because that's not the way it works. It's impersonal. These things are conditioned in our minds and at some point when causes and conditions are ripe, like when we calm down, when we sit down, we do a lot of meditation and then we get a really like a nice front row seat to see what's going on in our minds. Huh? You're all familiar with that now. <laughs> and so when the distraction arises, notice how funny it is. You didn't call it up. Like, nobody says, like, oh, like, I'm going to be distracted now. And be like, yeah, no, it just, it just happens. And then you realize, like, oh, I'm distracted. My mind is all over the place. And then you 6R, and then you come back. But that's not you. That's completely impersonal. So when we understand that this are just, these are simply habits of the mind, basically. They're stains of the mind, however you want to call it. Impurities, they're not you. They're just, they're just states of mind that are like that. They cause agitation. And here we're learning to change that. We're learning the alchemy of the mind. We're taking all of these stains, all of that junk, and turning it into bright gold so that we can have beautiful, uplifted, happy mind all the time. So this is what we're doing here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's the quiz. How do you know whether something is a stain of the mind or not? Yes. <laughs> So basically for this retreat, everything that's a distraction that's taking you off the loving kindness is a stain of the mind, right? Because you're intending to be with the loving kindness. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there will be some kind of tension in it. All these 16 states, you don't have to think which of these 16 <laughs> is it, should I 6R it? <laughs> if you feel that tension and that contracted state of mind and that self that's really grabbing onto something, then you know that it's one of these stains of one, one sort or another. And uh, then what's really important that we've really been emphasizing this whole time is how you let go of that. Because if you try to push it away and you try to uh, just force it out of your mind, then you're creating another little state of the mind, right? Another little person who doesn't like that and wants that to go away. So that's why the six R's are so skillful because you're very gently releasing and then you're relaxing the tension. And then in those moments, there's no little contracted self. There's just relief. There's an open, spacious mind. And that's the feeling of a mind without any stains in it. So then basically, after this, the Buddha says that once we start to see that all of these states are released and we have we have done away with much of these states, then one arrives at this unwavering confidence or like a joyful understanding about the Buddha, Avecha Pasati. The exalted one is an arahant, itipiso bhagava araham samma sambuddho. Vija charana sampanno sugato lo kavidu Anuttaro purisa dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanang buddho bhagavati So now you know the right context for this sequence. This sequence is not just to be uh, repeated, uh, just thinking uh, this, uh, this will really change something, but 
as we let go in meditation of all these unwholesome states, you will see directly for yourself here and now, Sandittiko, this that the Buddha was right. If you abandon all of these stains of the mind, everything that he teaches becomes alive. You can see it in your experience here and now. Mind you, I didn't mean to say that if you repeat those with an uplifted mind and training to bring faith forth in thinking about the beautiful qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, it's, it's also something that the Buddha recommended. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong on this, but uh, I want to underline the fact that here the Buddha is again putting all the wholes unwholesome states basically understanding the mind, how the mind works, what are wholesome states, what are unwholesome states, getting rid of the unwholesome states. And then this happens. So this is quite important. And we've seen in the previous talk, so um, a, a little bit more uh, around this topic. And now we're seeing it again in like the Sabha Sava Sutta yesterday. And then again today, talking about samaditti, understanding the states of the mind, and how when we let them go, the unwholesome states, then only gladness, only uh, faith arises, confidence, unwavering confidence. Avicca uh, pasati. It's different in the avicca. Uh, Pasade. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. There you go. This. <laughs> and so, I just, I just really love to uh, put, put this in, in perspective because this is how it happens. When, when we meditate and then we purify our minds with wholesome <laughs> states, we become very happy and we see here and now that the Buddha's teaching works. And it's true. And then that the good qualities of the Dhamma also arise. One arrives at this unwavering confidence about the Dhamma. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditti Ko Akaliko Ehi Pasiko Upanaiko Pachatang Vedita Bo Vinyuhiti Yes. One arrives at this Unwavering confidence about the Sangha. Uju Patipanno Bhagavato Sawaka Sangho. Nyaya Patipanno Bhagavato Sawaka Sangho. Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yugani Sapukala Esa Bhagavato. Good. That's great. <laughs> so, of course, when we understand the Dhamma, we understand that the Buddha was right. So, of course, when we have faith in the Dhamma, through our own direct experience, we have faith directly in the Buddha because we understand, well, this is what the Buddha taught. And then, obviously, those who practice in line with this, the Sangha, the four kinds of people or the eight types, then, then obviously we know that they're practicing right. The, 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 they're, they're practicing the right way. They're practicing to abandon these unwholesome states. And this is such a great field of merit for the world. Basically, people who practice what you're practicing now to let go of all these unwholesome states and bring up loving kindness instead, bring up compassion, bring up joy, mental stability, what this creates around you and around everybody else that comes into contact with this. So at that time, when one has given up, left behind, released, relaxed, and broke free from all these unwholesome states, one knows I experience this unwavering confidence in the Buddha. 
then one knows and experiences the meaning one knows and experiences the Dhamma one knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma from that gladness joy arises in the mind from that joyful mind the body becomes calm calm in body one experiences happiness and with a happy mind comes Samadhi so here we have an interesting bit where the Buddha says Yathodi ko pannasa chattang hoti vantang muttang pahinang patinisattang Does anybody here have an idea? What does that sound like? Do you know in relation to the Four Noble Truths, the Chattariya Arya Satchani. Which one of the Four Noble Truths? Third? Fourth? Uh, almost, almost. <laughs> Nirodha, yes. Uh, maybe you're familiar with this sequence which is in the Maha Satipatthana Sutta. Where the Buddha says, Yo tassayewa tanhaya asesa viraga nirodho chago patinissago mutti analeyo. Ah. <laughs> so it is the giving up, the breaking free from this first noble truth. <laughs> Our teacher Bhante Vimala Ramsey was very big on this uh, hand mudra. <laughs> so, and this is very important. Uh, yesterday I talked a lot about the second noble truth, and then before that we laid the ground for understanding the first as well. And today we're talking about the third, which is the letting go of all these stains of the mind and this is very very important and see here this is when the Buddha says that there is joy arising because one can see that they have they are experiencing this Dukkha Nirodo so I remember a time when I was uh, practicing a different kind of meditation and um, I was going through a lot of pain and um, I was being told to stay equanimous and, and I did I was remaining equanimous and I could sit through the pain for two, three hours and um, experience something that they call uh, the Sankaru Pekkanyana which is basically uh, being so disgusted with bodily pain that you just shut it off uh, and you just kind of disengage completely with the body and so you don't feel the pain but it doesn't really need to the same place where you know it's not an uplifted mind I would say it's just you know a mind that is not wanting to see the pain basically and I could do that I could do that for a very long time and um, yeah I wasn't really much more happy I would say <laughs> afterwards <laughs> so <laughs> Um, but I could follow the instructions and at some point I remember it was day maybe day four in that retreat particularly and that was my last uh, sitting retreat in that specific method and I'd started reading the suttas and I was aware of the Four Noble Truths and the Buddha's actual words and then I realized you know like I don't feel like this is the end of suffering. <laughs> 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 
And so that was my insight through this. And then I realized, uh, you know, there's something, there's something here that's not working. And I, just, and I just love that the Buddha here says, that points to the third noble truth, and, and then says that it's when we realize that these unwholesome states have been abandoned within us, how good this feels, how joyful this feels. And this is what a lot of people here have started to experience, is that the mind becomes much more clear, much more uplifted, much more wholesome, and this is so much happiness. And this is experiencing the third noble truth here and now. Yes. Third. 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 Yes, yes. <laughs> Bhante would always say, like, you see the, the Vitaka Mudra, and then uh, it, this is a very popular one, and then sometimes you see this one too, and then, but he was like, we're missing this one, which is like Dukkha Niroda. And so he actually, he actually ordered a bunch from Indonesia, like he made them, like he ordered some sculptors to like, made this one. That <laughs> Damasuka, we just got a, a whole bunch of like, this mudra. <laughs> Dukkha Niroda. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so if you see some pictures from Damasuka or our tradition, you'll often see one one of the pictures often will be like everybody's going like this. <laughs> so, and this is a major hallmark which differentiate uh, this particular practice with the six R's. What, you, what you're practicing with the six R's is this every time. Dukkha Niroda. Dukkha Niroda. You're letting go of this Dukkha, this tension every time, every time, rewiring the brain to be happy, to let go of suffering. Because what happens when you let go of dukkha? Yeah. Sukkha, <laughs> right? There's two options. <laughs> there's either dukkha or there's sukkha. Okay, very good. And so here and now, for yourself, you can experience this. For me, it took many years. I, I was looking for this for many years, and I couldn't experience it. All I was being told was like, be aware, be aware of the dukkha, be aware of dukkha, you know, be aware, everything's dukkha, 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 and then it's like, okay, yeah, like everything, like life is dukkha, like everything is suffering. But that's not the Buddha's teaching. That's just one of the Four Noble Truths. If you don't have dukkha nirodha, then it's not complete at all. So here it is. And the Buddha says the same thing about the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. When somebody sees that you've let go of all these states, then that gladness arises, the joy, the, the piti, the sukha, the pasadi, the body becomes calm. And then the mind gets collected because all these states are gone. And you experience here and now this understanding it's not just faith it's just actually understanding what the Buddha talked the, what the Buddha talked about and at that time and this is the fourth one I'm kind of skipping over the repetitions here at that time when one realizes I have given up left behind released and relaxed and broke free from all these unwholesome states then one knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the gl natural gladness of Dhamma. Uh, from that gladness, joy arises in the mind. From the joyful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes Samadhi. Sukhino Chittang. Very good. <laughs> Repeated so many times, uh, starting to get in, in the head. Okay, so did you want to? Okay, now if a monk or anybody of such virtue, such dhamma, such wisdom were to eat the finest hand-picked rice for alms with endless curry and dal, this would not impede him or her. 
just as a cloth which is stained and full of dirt <clears throat> becomes clean and bright with the help of clean water, just as gold becomes clear and bright from a smith's forge, if a monk of such virtue, such dhamma, and such wisdom were to eat the finest rice for alms with endless curry and dal, this would not impede him. So basically, this is just because monks can't do much. So the only thing we can go to is food for our, you know, uh, oh, this is really like, ooh, really exciting. Or just like wanting, you know, oh, I, I hope. I hope this time this house will have, uh, I don't know, you know, the, this kind of curry or like whatever it is. And so they're just like thinking. But for, for anyone, not just monks, but for anyone who experiences this, the stains of the mind are gone, their happiness and the joy, the gladness, the awecha pasati, like in the Ratana Sutta. Huh? Then all these things, they, they don't really matter. <laughs> There's just natural gladness, natural joy arising all the time. And this is where we feed, not, not in the senses anymore. This is where we know the good stuff is. So we're not thinking about what we're going to get for food. Of course, it's nice to have good food, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter so much anymore. We're not going to have, you know, go like, uh, uh, be so influenced by that. So then one meditates with a heart filled with boundless love, metta bhavana, suffusing one direction, a second, a third, and a fourth, above, below, and everywhere across to all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a heart filled with love, vast, expansive, measureless, free from anger and impatience, so what is left to be done after this is just the Brahma Viharas, just opening up. And this is what we're all doing here. Then the same thing with boundless compassion, Karuna. Same thing with boundless joy, Mudita. And same thing with boundless calm, Upekka. One meditates with a heart filled with boundless calm, suffusing one direction, a second, a third, and a fourth, and this will come soon. We will talk about this, uh, start talking about this tomorrow, the jhanas, and the progression of the Brahma Viharas through the jhanas, basically. Above, below, and everywhere, everywhere across, to all living beings in this boundless universe, one meditates with a heart filled with boundless calm, vast, expansive, measureless, and free from anger and impatience. Okay, so now we're getting closer. <clears throat> this is kind of a... I like this sutta because, well, for many reasons. Um, <laughs> in Canada, in my community, um, they just roll their eyes now when I say I love this sutta. <laughs> because they're like, Bante. You always say this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. But uh, this sutta is really uh, uh, particular because <clears throat> as it gives us a, a, another perspective on the talk on the jhanas, basically. And this tradition is this, this talk on the jhanas, which is like from all, all of the levels of meditation with the Brahma Viharas, is a very popular talk. And it's very important, like a road map basically, for our practice. And this is going to be tomorrow. But this is kind of like a... Um, I'm lacking the word in English. Like a teaser or like a, you know, like a... I only have the French, an apéro. Huh? Or d'oeuvre. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's also French. Yeah, like a... Appetizer, appetizer. yeah, there we go. I can <laughs> My first language is French, so uh, I had a little uh, black hole here. Um, so it's a little appetizer or like uh, just getting ready for the talk tomorrow and it's a different perspective.
but slowly we're, we're talking about higher and higher states of understanding, of realization here. And so as we've let go of all the unwholesome states using the six R's, using right effort, now this unwavering faith arises in the Dhamma, the Buddha, the Sangha, as we see this, and then we practice the loving kindness, the Brahma Viharas. I mean, the, the Buddha is explaining it very clearly here. And this is what everybody is practicing here. And then there comes a stage beyond this where the Buddha goes, one understands there is this, there is the base, there is the sublime, and there is a release beyond this whole field of conceptual thinking. And I'll break it down for you a little bit. So, atti idang, atti hinang. So, atti hinang, idang is, okay, there is this. There is all this work that has been done. Their mind is here, is very beautiful and bright, uplifted by the Brahma Viharas. It's been cleared. Ati hinang, what is what is lower? What is the what is the hinang here? Yes, but what what does that mean? All of the stains, perhaps, huh? All of this distractions. Uh, now mind starts to be very clear. There's this. Now the mind is very pure and bright, and now it sees things for what they are. Now there is the lower, there is the hinang. Atti <coughs> panitang. Then there's the higher, then there's the, the release from that. And panitang is what do we recite every morning that has panitang in it? Etang santang. Etang panirang Yadidang sabbasangkara samato Sabupadi patinisago Tanha kayo viraga nirodo nibbana Yes, yeah, yes, yes, nibbana So slowly, uh, we're getting there Now we're not fully released yet We're still holding on to objects of meditation Like upekka, which is a very high state to be experiencing in in its highest form yet it is not nibbana yet and so there is this ati masa sanyagatasa uttari nisarananti pajanati did i get this right was that right yes yes my eyes are a little bit uh, yes Good. So there is a release beyond all of this field of conceptual thinking and this is really important for us to understand because this is Nibbana. Nibbana is beyond concepts, beyond objects of meditation and we need to have very pure and developed minds to be able to let go of even perception itself. And this will be the talk tomorrow. So, to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> we have come very near to Nibbana. Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> very close. Very close. Very yes. good. Ah, yes. There's uh, other suttas where the Buddha, where the Buddha explains that uh, actually just practicing the six R's, practicing right effort, you're practicing Nibbana. It's not, it's not different, you know. There's, there's Nibbana, Nibbana that is at the end, but there's different kinds of Nibbana because there's this Brahmin who's saying like a Sanditiko Nibbanang, Sanditiko Nibbanang It's like, what, what is this? And the Buddha says is when you let go of greed, hate and delusion Labado, Lobado Samoha Then that is Nibbana So every time you six R, it's like a mini, mini Nibbana <laughs> Like putting out little, little fire <laughs> Baby Nibbana. And so this template, these four things that Ati Idang, Ati Hinang, uh, Ati Panitang, and then Ati, I can't remember. Ati Masa Sanyakata Sakutari Nisaranam. 
And these are the Four Noble Truths also. Uh, you, can, you can know here and now. This is a template that the Buddha used a lot in everything that he explained. So basically, and this is, this is literally the six R's also. It's just not said six R's, but it, that's what it means. So every time you're doing this, and then the Buddha says, continually observing and understanding in this way, in the six R's, basically. One's mind is released from the inclination from clinging outwardly, from the inclination to projecting in the future, bhava, and from the inclination to carelessness or negligence. In that release, one knows this is release. See, this is when we experience it, we know. For ourselves, yeah, this is it. This is the release. One directly knows the birth, birth of unwholesome states has been overcome. So this is touching upon dependent origination, paticca samuppada, a little bit. It's talking about birth, like rebirth, but this is also, birth can be also kamma, which can also be interpreted as these unwholesome states. The birth of these unwholesome states within us is completely overcome. Lived is the spiritual life. Done is what had to be done. There is no more conceit here. Monks, I say that this monk is cleansed by inner cleansing or inner bathing. And this opens up for the, the last chapter. But so this is the no bath. Yes. They should be taking. Yes. Yes. They yes. themselves yes. yes. And that is how you clean the cloth. Yes. Now, full circle. <laughs> I was wondering, what's the addition of your, your canon? Is it the Syam or is it Buddha no, Jayanti? Nalanda edition. Nalanda, oh. Is it the Indian edition? Indian edition. Oh. oh. Very nice. Good. <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to have some differences. Like, because sometimes there's little yeah. differences. Is there? No, not so far. Bohotacha. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, finishing with the cleaning. <laughs> it's been a long cleaning, huh? <laughs> okay. So, at that time, the Brahmana Sundarika Bharadwaja was sitting near and said, Does the respected Gotama sometimes go to the Bahuka river to bathe? Why, Brahmin, to ba go bathe to the Bahuka river? What will the Bahuka river do? Dear Gotama, the Bahuka river is believed by most people to bring fortune, to bring goodness, to bring merit, punya. Most people go to the Bahuka river to wash away their unrighteous actions that they've committed. To this the awakened one replied in verse, Bahuka and Adikaka, Gaya and Sundari Katu, Sarasati and Payaga, and the river Bahumati, the misguided may forever jump into without brushing off dark actions. What will the Sundarika do? What will the Payaga? What will the Bahuka? They do not cleanse those who have done hurtful actions, hateful men bent on harmful deeds. For those bright in heart, it is ever spring. For those bright in heart, the day is ever sacred. Those bright in heart, bright in actions, are ever truly practicing. It is here, Brahmana, that you should bathe and be a refuge for all living beings. And if you speak no lie, and if you harm not the living, 
If you take not what isn't yours, and if you be faithful and not selfish, what need you go to Gaia when all the wells will be your Gaia? When this was said, Sundarika Bharadvaja said, Excellent, dear Gautama, excellent. Just as if what had fallen over been set up right, or as what had been hidden was uncovered, or as if the way was shown to someone who was lost, or as if a light was shown in the darkness thinking, let those with vision see. In the same way, Bhante, the awakened one has brought forth and elucidated the Dhamma in countless ways. Respected Gautama, I go to the awakened one as a refuge to the Dhamma and the Bhikkhu Sangha. I would like to go forth directly from Master Gautama. May I receive the higher ordination? And then the Brahmin Sundari Kabharat Bhaja received the going forth and received the Upasampada. Then the Venerable Bharadvaja, dwelling alone, secluded, attentive, intent, and resolute, in no long time attained the purpose for which sons and daughters of good families honestly leave their home and become spiritual wanderers, seeking for the highest, the complete perfection of the holy life. And having realized the Dhamma by his own direct experience, he abided in it. He directly knew unwholesome states ha are vanquished. Lived is the spiritual life. Done is what had to be done. There is no more conceit here. And the Venerable Bharadvaja became another one of the Arahants. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> so do you understand now where the Buddha takes his idea of Sotapatti? Entering the stream? Isn't it interesting? This is here you should bathe in all these wholesome states. And from the beginning we start with explaining that these stains of the mind are just stains of the mind. They're not you. They're only imperfections. Sakaya ditti. Once you let that go, then there is unwavering confidence. Avicca passati. Huh? This is vichikicca, gone. <laughs> and then after that, you understand that this is where you should bathe where all these defilements are given up and you're just bathing in the Brahma Viharas, all these, the most advanced wholesome states that there are in the human form. And then you understand that bathing in the river doesn't brush off your dark deeds, which is sila bhatta paramasa. Huh? <laughs> So this is stream entry on the plate, basically, from the Buddha to you. <laughs> so on this, uh, I hope your mind is uplifted and happy, and I hope you have a beautiful evening. And I will see you tomorrow at the interviews. And I wish you the best. I don't know if you wanted to translate the... Yeah, yeah oh, yes, yes. Okay. Punya numodana. Merit Sherkara. Uh, I got that part. <laughs> two, two, one, three. Dukkha Patta Dukkha. Bhaya Patta Chani Bhaya. Soka patta chani soka. Hon tu sabbe pi pani no. Irang no punyang sabbe satta anumodantu. Irang no punyang sabbe satta anumodantu. 
सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया आग सत्ता चाबु मत्ता देव नाग माहितिका पुन्यंग थंगन मोदित्वा चीरंग रखंतु बुद्धा ससासना साधु साधु साधु